And hey, everybody, I'm the Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS. Welcome to Open BXRX. Coming up on today's show, we'll speak to the organizer of an important community health fair to learn about the medical services being offered. After that, we'll speak with the regional spokesperson of an organization to highlight a special initiative being put together for the tree speaking community. Plus, we'll turn to a deputy chief economist who will share an important housing market update that home buyers may want to hear about this spring. And then finally, we'll be joined by the America's Got Talent finalists who will give us a, a behind the scenes look at the creatives, a creative process for her new album. Watch out, sit back, kick off your shoes and relax your feet. We're open, here we go. Hey, everybody, I'm your host, the Dr. Bob Lee, and you're all watching Open. It's that live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. You can stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. Leading things off, our first guest is the lead organizer of the Manhattan Bible Church Community Health Fair. He joins us to uh, shine a light on the work that his church is doing with this health fair and to speak about the services that will be offered at the event. So please welcome to the show, Ellis Olive. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank Back you Back in the much. days on the ones and twos too. Oh, definitely, definitely. Give us a little perspective about uh, how you got started in the business. You know, give us a little background on you. Oh, myself? Well, basically I started out as an EMT and ended my career as an EMT. Yeah. I worked with Health and Hospital Corporation. Yeah which in turn, my first outpost that I went to was the Webster Outpost, which is now called the Tin House, but that's something entirely different. I continued with, continued going to the next place, which was Lincoln Hospital, which I operated out of there for approximately 10 years. I went to Jacoby Hospital, then was transferred over to Harlem Hospital and concluded my career at the tie 13, which is located on 173rd Street and Amsterdam Avenue. So you're in the business of saving lives. All the time. You know, and I tell people about that. How does that make you feel when you save somebody's life? Or be you're in a position to be able to save somebody's life? It's hard to describe. Um, I've been through a lot in my tenure of 35 years. I've seen a lot, which included the World Trade Center. Yeah. yeah. And that in and of itself was brutal. Uh, you but took a deep breath on that one. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I did. But nevertheless, in answer to your question, it's it's fulfilling. It has nothing to do with the pay, even though the pay is important. I believe in saving people's lives. Yeah. It was so important to me. And I think I, when I was growing up, my mother was always saying, I want you to be something. I want you to be a doctor or something of that nature. Yeah. And decided to become an EMT worker and concluded my career last night. Yeah. And it was very satisfying, very rewarding. Unfortunately, I left because I retired only because I was tired. I was tired. 35 yeah. years being in the street, it's tiring. But, but you, there is one thing I can say I did do that I really enjoyed. And I don't think anybody could really top that. I delivered assisted in the delivery of 43 babies. Whoa, all right. 43 babies. Right, so it's like a boxing record. You got how many years in the business? 35. 35 and... 43. 43. Yes. <laughs> yes. I could say that's good in this area, right? <laughs> it, it, it's it's that's, a feat that's, that it's... That's rewarding. That's fulfilling. Yes, it is. Yeah. It, um, I've delivered them in various places. That's special. Um, yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. I enjoyed it. I delivered it in drug-infested areas. I delivered it in homes, in the dark of night, in the back of cars. You did what you had to do because that's what the job required of you. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't think about it. What am I going to do? No. You take a deep breath and you yeah. continue doing what needs to be done because you're saving that person's life. Yeah. You're helping the person yeah. at that time. And to me, that is very important. Tell me something, Ellis. Any of these people ever come back and say, hey, man, I thank you for, you know, 
for delivering me. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had a few children named after me. Oh, okay. Uh, and um, but you don't really receive a thank you. Hmm. You really don't, and you really don't expect it. If you do, it's totally appreciated. Yeah. But if you're looking for a thank you, that's not what the job. It's probably about. there already. It's, yeah, there, it's there, but it's not going to be expressed in a way that you might perceive it. It's it's gratification for you being there at that time. And a lot of times words can't express mm -hmm. that particular feeling that that individual has. But God knew that was going to happen before it happened. I would say so. <laughs> I would say so. Definitely. So tell us about the, what you mixed off into. You're working with the Church of God. And, uh, okay. Um, and you have and, a health fair coming up. And working with Manhattan Bible Church, ironically enough, it happened approximately five years ago. Okay. And with a pastor, which is now someplace else. But nevertheless, we wanted to bring health awareness to the community mm -hmm. that um, that uh, I worked in for over 20 years. So I knew about the health conditions and uh, related to the individuals in that community. So I believed in bringing a health fair to said community instead of me, instead of people going there to the hospital or whatever, we're bringing the hospital to you. Bring it to the community. Exactly. Yeah. And with, with, what, with what we have right now, I believe it's so important for the community. It's, mm. It really, truly is. Yeah. It truly is. Where's it going to be held? It's going to be held when? Yeah, where where oh, at? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Manhattan Bible oh, Church man. itself on uh, 28, uh, 3016, or, yeah, 3016 9th Avenue, yeah, between yeah. 204th and 205th Street. All right. So you're going to be, you know, if, you're still in the business of helping others get what they need out of life. Well, That's I, what's I, important. You, know, you didn't I, really retire. I felt in the first year of retirement, I was having fun, just like anybody would do, go on vacations, yeah. do what you need to do to get the job out of your mind. But at the same time, you realize that it's in you. It never mm. really leaves you. You know, I think what I miss about the job itself is the camaraderie that I've had with individuals that are there. I still stay in contact with people now, but it's not the day to day that you would see. Yeah. But, um, I started five years ago, and we brought a lot out there just to bring enlightenment to the community, which it did. Yeah. And I had to stop for approximately two years, two to three years, and then I brought it back again last year. Yeah. And we saw the success in it. We did it twice last year, and um, especially during COVID, because I was handing out at that time COVID tests yeah. and having people bring COVID tests home. And then just invite, um, advising people of what to do where nutritional values is concerned, where your blood pressure is concerned. But, you know, ironically enough, I noticed that when I gave the COVID test to individuals, they were reluctant to take it. Not, be, not because they didn't want to take it. They didn't no. know. The, they didn't know. They didn't want to know. Excuse they me. The know. results of the test. And yeah. that was very interesting. But nevertheless, we did it. Yeah. And even though people may not have been in that particular area, myself and some others, I had a foot crew that went to areas that nobody would really go to. And we handed out COVID tests to them and we revised them yeah. of what was happening in the community. So if they wanted to you know, attend, they would be able to. So all your life you've been in the mix working <laughs> with people because you grew up playing music also, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So in fact, I'm still doing it now. You're still playing music? Yes. But now it's more... Christian and gospel music. Yeah, so your genres may change, but you still got the beat going. Oh, on. definitely, without question. It's in <laughs> it's the heart. If it's here, it's not going to leave. Yeah, heart's still beating oh, in a definitely. positive way. Um, so, what's going to happen on this date of this health fair? What, what's it going to look like? You have screenings going on. And well, screening is going to be done by Bronx Care. Okay, which they're going to be giving you blood pressure checks. Mm -hmm. They're going to check, be checking for diabetes or any other medical. Issues that you might have, Bronx Care is going to be there. I mean, we're also going to have individuals on the outside that mm -hmm. just with the passers by that may not wish to go into Bronx Care that are checking your blood pressure and also making sure that you don't have diabetes. Okay. And if yeah. you do, to refer you to the proper place to go to get it correct. Yeah. And what role is the, uh, the Manhattan Bible Church playing in the organizing of this uh, health fair? They have opened their doors to the community, and it's part of the community outreach that the pastor has, yeah. that the pastor is involved in. And since I've done this for a while, 
I spearheaded it. Mm -hmm. I approached him with it, and he said, fine. What's his name? Uh, Pastor Harry. Pastor Harry. Yes. Big shout out and praise to Pastor Harry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you for all you do. So here it is. It's coming up. What's the date again? Uh, the date's going to be on May 20th. May 20th. Okay. Well, we also have Mental Health Awareness. There it is. Yes. Mental Health Awareness to me is so important um, because there's so many things that are happening on the outside yeah. that people have issues but they don't wish to talk about it. I'll give you an example. As I stated earlier to, know, to you, I was involved in 2001 World Trade Center. Yeah. And it was something that even at this point in time, I really don't talk about. You got 30 seconds. But, okay. But at the same time, I did talk about it to somebody and I was relieved after that. Yeah. And I believe that individuals that have issues, we have yeah. professionals that are there that can go over there and help you. All you have to do is just go there and just talk with them and they will help you in any way they possibly can. I think there are a number of things in our community who are that's causing trauma to a lot of our, our people in the community. Yes. Um, 2000, the, the Twin Towers was one, uh, COVID was another. Oh, Being definitely. Being locked down in the home, you know, without going to school, that's another, you know, not being social with people. Social media is another thing, you yes. know. <laughs> I mean, there's so, you there's need so, to be face to face and talk to people. You need to be out in the community. There's so many things that we can yeah. talk about in reference to mental health, but at the same time, it's like yeah. people have to get up and say, I want the help. Yeah. You know, I need the help. And don't be ashamed. Don't exactly. be ashamed. We to, need to, to talk more. <laughs> <laughs> but give me your website where we can go find out more about everything okay, that you're website, doing. Okay, the website, my, um, in fact, it's just an email at this present time that I would have everybody contact me if necessary. It's okay. eellisolive7 at gmail.com. It's located on the flyer that you have. Yeah, there you go. Ellis Olive, event coordinator. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you. I see that you, you're wearing the cross. You're man of the cross. Yes, I am. And that represents something. That the cross itself represents my father. There you go. Which um, passed of lung cancer in 1999, mm -hmm. which actually prompted me to go to Manhattan Bible Church. That's where I started. I've been in Manhattan Bible Church mm -hmm. for 23 years. Now it's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Whoa. Amen. A combination. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks for coming. Such a great All time. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll take a quick break right here. We'll come back. I've got more coming your way next on Open. Qué color, perfecto, mijo. Gracias, thank you. What's wrong, mijo? Donating to a pet's medical care is one of the many ways you can help families in your community. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. Let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare, so you can decorate it how you like. Dinner! Hello? Excellent. I'm sorry for your Yeah, I saw you guys out there. We're in the middle. We're in the middle. And welcome back. Our next guest is the regional spokesperson for the Jehovah's Witness. And he joins us to uh, speak about the, the work that the organization is doing to support the, the tree community. 
with their communities shared through language, a language initiative. You got to hear this. So please welcome to the show, Daniel Sedaris. Daniel, welcome. Thank you so How much. You? So good nice to be to see here. You. No, my pleasure. Yeah. I mean, we always see each other by way of, uh, you know, uh, just maybe the internet or by a Zoom or or one of the other platforms that we use. But now you're here in the studio in person. And I, you know, I appreciate that. Thanks for coming in. We appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Thanks so much, Dr. Bob. So what's going on? You always have some new initiatives going on. Tell us about one of them. We do. So the Bible has a message of comfort and hope. And as Jehovah's mm -hmm. Witnesses try to spread that message, we don't want to leave anyone out. Yeah. So for the first time ever in the United States, we have this special initiative to reach out to the tree-speaking community yes. here in Greater New York. Now, by way of a little bit of background, as many know, the tree language is spoken by uh, millions of people in West Africa, especially yeah. in Ghana, and uh, to a lesser extent in some neighboring countries. Mm -hmm. And here in the greater New York area, there is significant numbers of people that speak Shui. Yeah. Uh, throughout the city, New Jersey, uh, Brooklyn, Queens, and especially right here in the Bronx. Yeah. But, but this is what's behind it. For some people, uh, they feel that spiritual things, because it involves so much of a person's heart and in addition to their mind, that can only be done best in what they consider to be the language of their heart. Yeah. So many from this community, they're multilingual. They learn English in school. But for those that feel this way, they feel that when it comes to praying to God, reading the Bible, developing a friendship with God, they can only do this best in that language, which oftentimes is the first language that they learned, the language yeah, that yeah. they were taught by their parents or their grandparents. So, and although they can feel the Lord, they can feel God, but now you can, you know, there's, there's a big outreach because you can do it in many different languages, especially in the new one that, that you're, the new initiative tree. It, it, exactly. So yeah. it, it's a very individual thing. Not yeah. everybody feels this way, but, but for those that do, and for those for whom tree is that language, we, we have this initiative. That's great, great. So uh, when did we start initiating this new initiative? This has been years in the planning and in the making. And then finally, in this month of May, it's, it's underway. So uh, the first thing that was involved was planning all the different components of the outreach. So one component is we acquired and obtained about 70 mobile literature cards. And we stocked these yeah. with Bible-based literature in English and in Sri on a variety of subjects that are the things that are most often of concern to people today. Yeah. And these literature cards have been placed in neighborhoods and subway stations, wherever this community is most likely to be found. So that was one component that had to be planned and organized and such. Uh, a second component of the outreach is volunteers are visiting the shops and the marketplaces where the community is most likely to be yeah. found. Because everybody's so busy, there's not, not enough time in the day to get things done. So we want to be accessible in these places for those that are interested. And yeah. then the third component of the outreach was the door-to-door -door activity. So finding neighborhoods and areas where we can go from door-to-door -door looking for Shui speakers. How did, you, how did you find that out? I mean, did you have to find out the zip codes and how did you find out where people are living. So there yeah. are a number of congregations of Jehovah's Witnesses in the area that are tree-speaking congregations. Yeah. All their activities, all their uh, their congregation meetings are in the Shri language. So all these uh, congregations are participating. So they're from the community. They know the community. Yeah. Does it sound a little bit like Patois, like, like Jamaican uh, sort of? I, I wouldn't know how to characterize it. I'm, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I had some Ghanaian friends that tutored me in just how to say shui. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not as good as I should be, but I'm getting better. So, yeah, I, I, I couldn't characterize the language because yeah. I don't have any familiarity. Tree. With I was calling it tree early on, but uh, I, I guess, you know, it's, it's tree. Tree with a W. So what my friends explained, and again, I'm in no position to correct anybody else, Dr. Bob. It's okay. But they said your best ch chance is uh, C-H-W-I, Shui. So, Sh shui. so okay. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. But for any that know exactly how it should be pronounced, I appreciate your patience. Yeah, we all know. We're all on the same page. Though. Yeah, exactly. How will this campaign help our, our community? So what a, a wonderful thing it is to have two distinct communities 
connect in a positive way. So yeah. you have the religious community of Jehovah's Witnesses connecting with the New York area, sweet speaking yeah. community in a positive way over a common shared love and respect for a language, mm -hmm. which is sweet. I mean, that in and of itself is just such a positive thing to have communities to be able to do that. But mm -hmm. it also is, is helpful to the community in another way. This is a community that's very much family oriented. And of course, that's true of many other cultures, but it's definitely a, a characteristic of, of this community. And so part of this outreach is we have focused and specialized the message based on all the things that the Bible says for families. Yeah. And this, this community, as I have been explained to me, is very interested in making sure that they transmit to their children, the next generation, the spiritual and the religious values that they want them to have and to keep yeah. in a changing world. So that's something that we think will, will be very much appreciated by the community. How has the response been thus far? It has been exceptionally well received. Just last night, I was able to visit with a group of individuals that are at the heart of this mm -hmm. campaign. And I asked them that exact question. And here's some of the things that they mentioned to me. They said that uh, this is a community that's very hospitable anyway. But as they've had these individuals approach and they get to hear the Bible's message in their own language, it yeah. has been an exceptionally warm reception. And because of that, that has served to energize the volunteers even more. And that enthusiasm and energy has then come back to the public. So what they said that it's, it's been an exchange of positive energy between the two groups, mm -hmm. uh, an interchange of encouragement is the way that they, they mentioned it. Then, do you ever get the opportunity to sit in these different uh, churches with the different languages? I have, uh, you know, I, I would love to do that just to hear and you know and feel it yeah so the the congregations of jehovah's witnesses everywhere in the world they want to serve the community they want to serve people in the way the, that language of their heart the language that they feel they can best uh address spiritual things mm -hmm. so so yes uh, there's uh, kingdom halls of jehovah's witnesses everywhere in a variety of languages yeah and if a person is interested in this information um and they don't speak uh tree <laughs> I hope I'm saying it right. Where can they go for more information? So there's two choices. One, they can just be on the lookout for the next initiative in their area. There's actually seven other initiatives like this that are either underway this month yeah. or that are going to be launched soon in the next 60 days in different parts of the country and in different languages. But the more immediate way is to visit our website, jw.org. And if I can make a specific suggestion, on the sure. homepage of jw.org, not always, but typically, every day or every couple of days, the lead article will match what's happening in the news cycle. So that whatever it is that we're living or we're experiencing at that moment, we can go to jw.org and we can see what the Bible has to say about why these things are happening, yeah. how we can cope with them now, and how we can have confidence in a better world soon. That's great. Anything else that uh, that's coming up that we need to know about? So probably the biggest thing next are our annual conventions. Oh, okay. uh, These are going to be taking place in this area in Brooklyn, Queens, Jersey City, serving the whole community. Yeah. The theme is going to be exercise patience. It's something that all of us uh, can benefit from by what the Bible is it, Bible's advice on cultivating patience in this yes. world. Listen, thank you so much. Daniel Sedaris, we appreciate you. Thank you so thank much, you. Dr. Bob. It's a pleasure you. to be here. You got it. Okay. All right, we'll have to take a quick break right here, but uh, we'll come back. I've got a whole lot more. That's all coming your way next, right here on Open. Where did that time go? I don't know how I got it. done the hard part. You quit smoking. Now do the easy part and get scanned for lung cancer. If you smoked, you may still be at risk, but early detection could save your life. Talk to your doctor and learn more at savedbythescan.org. Found my heart out there in the open. Trees make you feel smaller. Can't help but get lost again. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org.
Kids! I don't want to talk about it. 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 Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Kids, you all right? This family's prepared. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. Go to nyc.gov slash readyny or call 311 for more information. Welcome back. You know, home buying season is in full swing, and uh, we're hearing a lot about the high interest mortgage rates and rising inflation and low housing inventory. You might be wondering uh, if home ownership is still a, a worthwhile investment. Let's turn to an expert for insight on the latest housing market trends and to hear an outlook update for spring, summer, and beyond for our area and nationally. So joining us with more is Jessica Louts, Deputy Chief Economist and uh, Vice President of Research of National Association of Realtors. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Jessica, how are you? Good. How are you today? Good, good. Hey, Jessica, you know, many in our audience are contemplating whether it's a, a good time to buy or sell a home. Um, what trends are uh, agents seeing in the spring, this spring, and uh, what can we expect in the second half of uh 2023. So what I would say is that this is actually a pretty favorable environment. We know that interest rates are actually ticking down. There's a lot of demand for homes, but buyers right now actually have a chance to perhaps even negotiate. We know that there are multiple bid situations, but there's a lot of buyers out there who are ready to make this move, who are tired of sitting on the sidelines. Yeah. And, you know, the NRA uh, recently released its uh, wealth gains report. Talk about that. What's it all about? Absolutely. We know that homeowners have been the winners in the last couple of years. Home prices have gone up. And so homeowners who have been in their homes for about a decade are actually sitting on substantial wealth gains as these home prices have gone up. So in New York, in your area, we're actually seeing that the typical homeowner who's been in their home for a decade has $135,000 in home equity gains that they've actually had. Yeah. And speaking about what what uh, type of a return on investment have middle home, income homeowners uh, seen in the last decade or so? So in your area, it's one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars that the typical homeowner has had as a return on investment. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, for all homeowners nationwide, they typically have forty times the equity and housing wealth. Let me rephrase that. They typically have forty times uh, the wealth that the typical renter is has out there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what advice would you give to clients uh, in the market who are in the market to purchase or, or sell um, with the interest rates the way they are, the, the, the fluctuating or going higher? So I have to say for sellers out there, they're probably sitting in a pretty good scenario right now if they do want to make a housing trade because of the housing equity gains that they have had. We yeah. also know that more than a quarter of home buyers right now are actually paying all cash. And many of those are recent sellers who have these equity gains. They're moving to more affordable areas, right sizing, and so they're able to make this housing trade. We also know that for home buyers right now, have patience. It is a difficult transaction to make, but when you have your expertise, on your side, it makes it a much easier transaction. Having your financial house in order and making sure that your realtor is there with you on your side as well. Yeah. You hear a lot of people talking about, well, you know, I, I, I can get a lot more for my home right, right about now, but they get more, but then they're going off to buy another home. How can they balance that out? Because you're <laughs> going to get more, but you're going to pay more when you go to buy the other house. 
Yeah. So what we are seeing right now, you know, at the end of the day, people have to move, whether there is a life change that happens, a marriage or divorce, a new job. And some people are making trades right now, even if they are nervous about doing that with the higher interest rates. We also know that migration patterns are strong. People are moving to different areas of the country. And as they look to these different areas, they're able to actually find a home that's priced at where they're comfortable making that purchase. Are people still benefiting? Like you you have a home in New York, you sell it. Of course, it's going to be you know, get a high price for the, the sale of the home. But then you were able to go to Florida and, uh, and North Carolina and South Carolina and, and uh, Georgia and get a lower price home. I mean, almost the same home with a little more property for like if something costs 500000 here in New York, it'll be like one hundred and fifty to 200000 in uh, in those areas down south. Is that still the case? We or? are. We are. Yes, absolutely. Those migration patterns are strong. We're seeing a lot of people move into Sunbelt states. And one of the big reasons why is there's a lot of retirees out there. They want to actually find a bigger place and perhaps move to a place with a warm climate, favorable tax conditions. And so they are migrating to different areas. And of course, chasing the grandbaby is always an attractive pitch as well. Exactly. Are there any resources that the people can go to for homeowners or, or potential buyers? Um, Absolutely. To find out more. Go to realtor.com. Realtor.com. Absolutely. Yes. And all the information is right there. Go to realtor.com and you can find information about the buying and selling process, but you can also find information on how to find your perfect agent who's going to help you with that financial trade, your biggest investment, your yeah. home. Yeah, you know, uh, and a lot of people are still skeptical. They need to be held by the hand and say, you know, Come on, let me walk you every step of the way. Do they still have uh, that person who can pay close attention to the nervous buyer or seller and who can walk you, take you through it every step of the way? Do they have that person? Absolutely. That person's your realtor. They're going to price your home competitively, find that qualified buyer. And for buyers, they're going to help you negotiate and find that perfect home for you. Yeah. And for somebody just starting out, what do you? What's your advice to them? You're gonna want to do your research. Have your financial house in order. Make sure that you find your mortgage broker who's going to help you understand what you can qualify for and what you feel comfortable paying at the end of the month as well. And absolutely find your realtor who's going to help you understand every step of that process through the way. Have your financial house in order. Do some house cleaning. <laughs> 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 Listen, thank you so much. Um, give us the website one more time for everybody who wants to jump in uh, and people who are in the market and ready to buy or sell. Absolutely. You want to go to realtor.com mm-hmm. to find your agent to help you through that process. Thank you so much, Jessica Louts, Deputy Chief Economist and Vice President of uh, Research for the NAR. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll take a quick break right here. Guess what? I've got more. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Here we go. Next. We all know what it's like to feel alone, but it just takes one new connection. Want to get out of here? To empower many. This is unbelievable. It doesn't take a superhero to bring forces together. We all have the power to reach out. Let's go. And help someone feel like they belong. Pretty cool, huh? We are stronger together. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. 
Christmas time yet. It's time. Donating pet food is one of the many ways you can help families in your community. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the one that says, sure, I can have a drink. Or the feeling that says, okay, I've been drinking. Now what? It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Plan ahead. Catch a sober ride. Buzz driving is drunk driving. I know what you're thinking. I need a job. Well, I've been there. I've been there. But you gotta keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a course online. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Dear moms and dads, what you have achieved here today is going to help us and our futures. It is why we are coming up on stage to collect your diplomas. You know it's true. Mom, we love you always. Everything I do, I do when you graduate, they graduate. Visit finishyourdiploma.org to find free and supportive adult education centers near you. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? You're not gonna get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Mama! Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. And I'll be your sub today. Can you see anything different as a pill? No. no. You don't know? Fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. There is only one thing that will save somebody's life. That is naloxone nasal spray. Fentanyl is cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. Why would drug dealers put a lethal dose of fentanyl in drugs if they know it's so harmful? Really just all about the money. I just didn't realize that one pill could change your whole life. More kitchen now. And welcome back. Yeah, hope you're having fun. I know I am. Thanks for joining us. Our next guest is a uh, California native, a singer and songwriter, and an America's Got Talent semifinalist. She joins us to speak to, well, speak to us about the, her album. She has a wonderful album project to highlight her upcoming performances this summer. So please welcome to the show, Selena Graves. She's in the house. Yes, Selena, how are you? Good, how are you? All the way from California. California <laughs> building, yes. Yeah, what time is it out there? Well, it anyway, thank you for joining us. I know you had to get up a little early. <laughs> okay. We appreciate you. And of course. wow, you've come a long way. Give us a little background. How did you get started into wanting to exercise this instrument as a, a career? Uh, growing up, my father's been in a band, so I've always been around music as long as I can remember. Um, he used to bring me up on stage when when uh, I was little, um, I used to go to his rehearsals. I'd pick up the instruments and start playing with them and then realize, you know, um, I used I was a really shy kid, so I would never sing around anybody. But my dad caught me in the shower one time and after that, <laughs> <laughs> it was over. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you've been singing ever since, right? Ever since. Probably like six, seven years old. So how did you um, break through? Because if you you were like an introvert, you didn't want anybody to hear you. You're singing in the shower, using yeah. the walls in the shower in the background to cover up your sound. Mm -hmm. And and then all of a sudden you said, you know what? Let, let me let a few people hear what I'm sounding like. 
Yeah, I started posting videos on YouTube um, because it was easier for me to sing in front of a camera than in front of people. So I, I posted videos on YouTube and they started going viral. Uh, I started, you know, people started recognizing me at school and I got over 6 million views and Ooh. kind of blew up. So, yeah. You start getting those phone calls, huh? Phone calls, uh, you know, I just remember the first time I was out somewhere and somebody's like, oh my God, you're that girl from, you're that girl from <laughs> that sings on YouTube. And then that's when I knew it was like I had a gift, you know? Yeah. And how did that make you feel? It was special. It was special because I was an athlete my whole life, you know? So having that, having that was like, insane because everything I touched was just, it turned to, my dad my dad would always say everything I touched would turn to gold I, I yeah. he didn't even he put a bicycle and I just rode it you know it put me in front of piano I just played it and yeah and then yeah. I and I just started you know picking up music at a very young age and uh people started recognizing that and it's just it blew up from there yeah it was just now everything was just natural to you you just pick it up and just start playing it right I could do that too in my dreams no, really, I'm a bad guy. I'm a, I can play the piano. I can, I can get crazy. But um, you an athlete? Yeah, I played uh, soccer my entire life, basketball, uh -huh. um, softball, nationally. Um, I had full scholarships to, yeah. you name it, you know, schools knocking down our door to try to get me to go to their school. Hey. Um, my senior year, I yeah. tore my ACL. That's what it's about, you know, when you got these schools fighting over you, you know, you know, yeah. send, send it in money. Right, right. But and then, then I, God I really stepped in and said, uh, let me mess with your ACL a little bit so that uh, we can uh, switch careers because, you know, you can play, but you can go on singing until you're 80 and 90 and 100. That's what I'm saying. So I feel, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But no, that was, that's, that's true. I feel like it was, that's, it that's was real. Yeah. That's real. Yeah, it was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. So how did you feel? Um, tell us about your experience on America's Got Talent as a contestant. You know, it, it, that was the most surreal thing because, you know, as a kid, I watched that show. And um, to actually physically be there on that stage, you know, walking out there with Terry Crews and then seeing the whole crowd and the Ooh. judges, it just such a surreal moment for me to be out there and i kind of blacked out for a minute you know i didn't it didn't feel real but uh yeah the best experience of my life i it, it jump started my music career uh -huh. and i would do it all over again in a rb yeah H how did you feel uh performing in front of uh simon <laughs> he could be tough See, at times that, right yeah did he intimidate never, you he did he did he did and it was off camera too. He intimidated me as soon as I walked out on the stage because they didn't show this. But he asked me, he goes, would you like a glass of water? But he asked me that and, and then Terry Crews comes and brings out the water and I'm all <laughs> shaking, trying to open it in front of 2,500 people, you know? So yeah, it was intimidating because he sees singers all the time. You yeah, know? And yeah. For him to be like one of the first judges to stand up was, it, it was just mind blowing. Yeah. And, and you had that crowd standing up and applauding you. You know, once you got that crowd, boy, woo, it's hard to yeah, say no. I yeah. The crowd felt you right away. Yeah, what what did you beautiful. sing, by the way, on that night? Share, share that with the, for the people who didn't see you. I sang Mercy by Sean Mendez, which wasn't the original song I was supposed to sing. Um, I was supposed to sing a different song uh -huh. and then they changed it up like literally a couple weeks before and I had to learn a new arrangement. But oh. um, yeah, so that was the true test about being an artist, you yeah. know, having to change it up and just, you know, just go out there and do what you can and do the best that I could. And, yeah. And, and, I showed out, so. and now you're not shy anymore. So when people put you on the spot and say, hey, can you hit us with a little something, something, just give us a little taste. Wh what do you do? <laughs> You know that that's still that that shyness is still, <laughs> but I pushed it. I pushed through it because uh, it makes you stutter, not stutter, but it makes you think for a hot second, and then you say, "Oh yeah, I got this. What am I afraid of?" And then bam. Yeah, yeah. So can you yeah. hit us with something nice and warm, just a little taste? Oh my god! <laughs> you left me that mic 
microphone right here. See, that microphone is ready. It was right there. Look at that. It is. It is. <laughs> Let me see. Um, <laughs> if I should stay, I would only be so I'll go, but I know that I'll thank you every step of the way. God, <laughs> Selena, <laughs> Selena Graves. We're gonna see a lot of you, right? Thank you. I hope so. Can I'm I here. stand up and applaud? <laughs> Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So wait a minute. Yeah. So after that, after that performance, a lot of people started calling you all over the place, right? What, yeah. What, what yeah. happened from that? Well, um. I linked up with Ron. Um, it's it's being signed to an independent label, I feel like is more benefit than signed to a crazy huge label like Sony, you know? And yeah. I feel like I felt more safe and um I believed in myself enough. Ron believed in me enough, the label three to go music. Um, they believed in me enough and I feel like uh I, I made the right choice. Um and yeah, it's just it's just been a hell of a ride. I've been working at this my whole life, and I'm just so blessed and excited mm. for what's in the future. That's true. That's true. So tell yeah. us about the truth, the album, the truth. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's just released this in January. Um, uh -huh. Really, a, a lot of experiences that I've been through in my life, and um, a lot of hands on. Um, so many people had helped me with this album. Uh, the Kingsman, I was flying back and forth from Philly to, to Cali, um, and to LA, you know, so um, it's special to me because it's my first album mm -hmm. and there's a lot of great songs on there and um, the world's not ready for what's next though. And uh, you have a, a, a single on there that uh, that's closer to your heart. I mean, the whole album is personal yeah. and you're passionate about the whole thing, but you know, there's always one that uh, you want to put out first. And that single is a uh, West Side. West Side. I felt West like Side. West Side. A hey, West oh, Side. Oh, look at you! <laughs> Can we hear yeah. a piece of it? You You want me to sing it? We're gonna no. We're gonna We're gonna throw to it right now. You ready? Oh, let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Finally get a glimpse of love What an awesome day Drinks in the sun Taking shots and celebrate Westside Cali vibe, yeah Wanna ride out Sunny out, yeah I finally get a glimpse of love What an awesome day Drinks in the sun Taking shots and celebrate Wanna ride out Sunny out, yeah That was the last time That was the fast time you were my baby, consider it past time. It wasn't easy, now you believe me. Love is a bottle of wine, only gets better with time. You take my breath away, and honestly, I know you feel the same. I never knew someone who'd come and take away the pain. I finally get a glimpse of love. What an awesome day. Drinks in the sun, taking shots and Selena Gray, send me a copy. Send me a copy. What is it? Hey, let's go up to the studio in the Wizard of Oz booth. Uh, make sure you get her copies. Make sure you get all that information over here so that uh, we can touch it too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you you're on a roll now. You you hey, ready to go? Rolling. Yeah. I'm ready. You feeling it? I'm feeling it. The ball's rolling. I'm ready to go on yeah. tour. I'm ready to perform for my fans. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. I'm super excited to finally have my own music to share with them and for them to have like that feedback that I've gotten from. Oh from man. That's a good feeling. Is- to have your own yeah. and then you have a remix version of this also, right? Tell us about it. Yeah. Dance version. That one's gonna be fun. Cause we wanted to make because that's kind of like a summer vibe, slow yeah. between poppy. But we have the the remix, which is the dance version, which you can play in the clubs too. So that that one's also gonna be fun. Oh, I'll put that on my turntable. Send me a copy. There you go. Yeah. That's real cool. Okay. That's special. Now you, you got something coming up, right? You have a fourth of July performance. Is it in New York? Where is it in California? Where is it? So I'm gonna be in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Uh, to be in Atlanta. First, I'm going to be flying out to Buffalo. Then we're going from Buffalo back to Cali, then from Cali to Atlanta. So, Ooh. and then it's, you know, do shows after that, you know, back to back. So I'm really, really excited to finally be, you know, with, with the, with the dancers, with the band, all that good stuff. So we got a lot of, a lot of performances coming up. Look here at the, the report magazine. Look at that. <laughs> Rest in peace to my former self. Explain that. Um, that actually is, is close to me. Um, I went through a lot of things and trauma in my life growing up as a kid. Um, I was, I was safely and, and most importantly, um, I was taken away from my mom at four years old. Yeah. So I had a lot of trauma growing up, um, with that. And so I let that consume me and saying RIP to my former self being, yeah. Someone who's always scared and intimidated to be their their true being and not someone else. Um, that's what really that meant to me. Um, to stop hiding who you really are and just be be yourself. Yeah, out with the old, in with the new. You go exactly. Yeah. Now, does this album help you with that? How did you iron a, a lot of that stuff out and get that stuff out of the way? Um, music just did. You know, music. I started. You know, music. I, I just I'll sit here sometimes and just just sing, and and that passion that I have for it, and the way that I make people feel when I sing, the yeah. energy that I get. And I knew, I knew, when I stepped on that stage for the first time on America Got Talent, and the whole crowd stood up. I knew this is what I was supposed to be doing. Ah, <laughs> gave you an uh, outlook or inside view of what's uh, what's yeah. ahead, right? So yeah, absolutely. When people come to see you in in, in concert. What can they expect? You got a lot of movement going on on stage. You could, you, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like. I mean, certain songs. Um, I like having just the band and being intimate um, with the fans. But also, uh, I like to dance. I like to move around. Um, so we're gonna have the dancers. We got the band. You know, feeding off of each other. It's gonna be a fun, a fun experience. Mm, mm, mm. Can't wait to to you come uh, to New York City. You know, East Coast wants to see more of you. I know. I haven't been to New York City yet, and that's a dream of mine. So hopefully we can make that happen. I know a lot of fans out there. Um, yeah. I get that all the time online. That, when are you coming to New York? So just best believe we're going to make that happen, New York. Yeah. Listen, follow me. I'm going to follow you. Mine is D-O-C on Instagram. D-O-C Bob Lee. Okay. Doc Bob Lee. Okay. Sounds good. I got all you. Right. Now, are you working on part two on an- another album, or you're going to work this yes. one first and then focus on that later? Um, I've already started write- writing. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and I feel like this one's... I have I don't even have words for it. I'm so excited with the sounds, with um, what the, 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 what the lyrics I've come up with, the melodies I've come up with, mm. and I've worked really hard on on this and i know once other hands get on it and we all you know because it it takes a lot of work and people don't realize you know when you're listening to a song how much work goes into just that one song and how many people are involved so yeah um, i'm really excited to see how this album grows this next album goes are you featuring anybody on this album the next album um i'm not sure yet i'm pretty sure i probably will the Kingsmen for sure, because they're just super talented and I love working with them. And yeah. we mesh 
together and their voices are they each one of them bring something you know crazy talented to the table so yeah they're good we had them on here we had them on with us so yeah that would be great how, yeah, now, how many songs on the next album so far i've got five but this is still early yeah it's you're still working early. on it pushing the first album so i'm i'm on it you know this is still early but i'm hoping to at least have because the this this last album had eight songs i at least want like 10 to 12 so push a little bit more yeah, um, yeah. it's hard because when you have like when you have 20 songs to, to narrow it down to to just so many is difficult yeah selena take your time man take your time and do the thing right you know do what you love yeah. do what you love It'll all come out. That passion will come out onto that album, and I'll take it and put it on my turntable and, do, 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 <laughs> and cut it up just a touch. <laughs> yeah. You want to say, uh, send some love to your fans? Yes, everybody. If you're watching this, I love you. I'm really excited to go on tour in your city. Um, Follow me on at, if you haven't already, at Selena Graves Official. That's where I'll be posting all my tour dates, all my performance dates. And I'm super excited to release this next album for you. All right. And we'll post this interview up on uh, on your page, too. Well, we'll send you a copy and you can post it up. Sounds good to me. All right. All right. We're following you every step of the way. We're watching you, girl. Do your thing. Make us proud. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Where can we follow you? I get the uh, at, Facebook forward Selena slash official. Yeah, at Selena Graves official. Um, I am a TikTok live creator now, so um, I'm always going live doing performances on TikTok uh -huh. and it's also at Selena Graves official as well. So make sure to follow me on TikTok because that's really where you're gonna find me um, doing some tiny performances here and there when I'm in between shows. Beautiful. Love you, girl. Love you. Love I love you. you guys. All right. Selena Thank Graves, so singer, songwriter, America's Got Talent, semi-finalist. She has a new album out, new single, working on part two. She's going to be around for a while. She's doing her thing. Selena, thank you, and we love you, and God bless you. Before we wrap up here today, I'd like to uh, give a shout-out to uh, our friends at the Einstein Cancer Center. They'll be hosting their annual see, test, and treat cancer screening event, and we salute you for your tireless efforts in this fight against cancer, and send all of our love to you, and we support you every step of the way. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's show. I want to go on and on and on and keep going because we've got some great content, a lot of good uh, artists coming on, and a lot of good people coming on our show. I thank our viewers for tuning in and checking it out, and you, our viewers, for chilling and, and hanging with us. And you can join uh, Kim and Arlene, Darren Jaime, and Rena Valentin for the new episodes of Open Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. For all of us here at BronxNet, have a great and enjoyable day. And always remember, what you are is God's gift to you, which you make yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice. Let your choice control the choose. And remember, whether you say you can or you can't, either way, you're right. So say you can and you will. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee, and I'll catch you another day, another way. I'll see you over 107.5 WBLS. I love you all. Peace. Only gets better with time. You take my breath away, and honestly, I know you feel the same. I never knew someone who'd come and take away the pain. I finally get a glimpse of love. What an awesome day. Drinks in the sun, taking shots and celebrating. Day. Drinks in the sun, taking